It's beer o'clock on Real L Craft Beer. Today I'm going to show you a beer from Vocation, which I think they're pushing the boat out really far in terms of like taking on the big giant companies of the world. They're having a real go at them here. Um, this is Vocation. Vocation's Naughty and Nice Coconut Milk Chocolate Imperial Stout. This beer is coming in at 10% ABV. What a very, very clever, cheeky, very cheeky thing to do, Vocation. Um, I'd like to thank Simon. Thank you very much, Simon, for... Uh, sending us the beer there's a few more beers in the line in the range which we haven't been able to get a hold of but just to get this coconut one which i think if you asked me to choose out of all of them i probably would have chosen the coconut now i'm the type of person when i open up a box of celebrations which of course this whole range of beer is based on it's more or less Christmas time, 2022. Celebrations are out in the supermarkets. Two boxes for £7, whatever they are selling for these days. Um, I'm the type of person, I, I will eat the coconut. The coconut, I will eat the bounties first. I will eat the bounties first. I love a bounty. So I was shocked to find out that <coughs> celebrations, Mars celebrations, they decided... To take out the coconut ones. I love the coconut ones. They're amazing. Anyway. Thank you very much Simon for the beer. How is it pouring? Well to me. If you have a look at the liquid. Pouring out. Into the glass. It looks kind of thin doesn't it? Have a look at the, the liquid. It look, it, it, you know, it looks. In, it's not looking like an imperial stout. It's more or less looking like a dark mild. But when the beer does. When the beer does then pour into the glass, it's looking jet black. Jet black, two finger, tan coloured head. Nice levels of carbonation rolling up the side of the glass. What are my initial thoughts with regarding the beer? I think the marketing team of pulled off a blinder here i mean i tried to go on the website i googled um vocation celebrations beer last night just to read up a little bit before i did the review and it tried to take me to vocation's website where i was hit with a error 404 code so obviously either mars have already been on to vocation and said hey what are you doing here and they're like right we need to take this page down or They've completely sold out of this beer as soon as the damn stuff was put on the website. I imagine it's a bit of both. I imagine Mars are already looking at it. And I imagine the beers, as soon as they were released, they sold out like wildfire. These are totally Instagrammable, Facebookable, Twitterable beers, aren't they? So we've looked at the beer, let's get the aroma. One to two finger tank on it head, jet black beer in the glass. Nice head retention. Let's get the aroma. Now I'm gonna say straight off, and I, I, I don't mind, I've, I've always been honest on the channel. There is a fear. There is a fear that Vocation have put all of their emphasis, all of their energy, all of their time into marketing these beers. And the beer in the end is a bit of an afterthought. I'd like to think not, but when you put so much effort into something like this, it's not really about the beer. I mean, that makes no sense really, does it? But it's all about the marketing, it's all about how many people kind of Instagram share these posts. We'll get to all of that in a moment. Let's let's get the aroma and taste the beer. 
It's a bit of biscuit. There's a bit of nuttiness coming through. There's a bit of sweetness. There's a little bit of coconut. I would say toasted coconut. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Wah. Wah, wah. Um, ooh. The sweetness in this beer is almost kind of making my tongue tingle. The sweetness of this beer is really making my tongue tingle. It's a very almost uncomfortable sweet beer. Oh, where do I start with this? Um, it's almost as if these younger, newer, vocation are no older than, their breweries are about seven years old probably. So I'm going to call them a younger brewery because there's some breweries that have been around for hundreds of years. Um, I think that these younger brewers think that they've hit the holy grail they think I, I think that they've kind of like because there's a lot of breweries doing this now tiny rebel included tiny rebel um there's a few breweries that have gone down this road of making massively sweet beers but it's almost as if they're kind of like rubbing their hands together in joy going we found the Holy Grail. We've managed to take all of the bitterness out of beer and make it massively sweet. And everybody's going to want to drink it. Well, I'm awfully sorry, Vocation. And I'm awfully sorry, Tiny Rebel. And I'm awfully sorry, Seven Brothers, to a certain extent. Um, I, I don't want to drink this style of beer. Um, it's way too sweet for me. It's way too cloiny for me. I know I might be a bit of a bar humbug type of kind of thing going on because it's celebrations and celebrations are sweet. And they should be sweet and this beer should be sweet. But, but, and here's the big but. As a person who drinks beer... And as a person who likes Imperial Stout, it's very difficult to call this an Imperial Stout because what is this brown liquid? What is this brown liquid? If this brown liquid is roasted malt, then where is the, where is the roastiness? Where is the toastiness? It comes natural with a Russian Imperial Stout. In fact, you cannot brew a Russian Imperial Stout without pulling in bitterness. It has to be done. It's roasted malt. You're going to get chocolate and coffee and caramel. Unless, unless vocation of put a million gallons of sweetness in this beer to counteract all of that roastiness. I simply do not know what this base beer is. I simply do not know what dark black liquid this is that they've been able to call it or to make it look like an imperial stamp. Now, my suspicion, my suspicion with this beer is that it's a, maybe a light beer. Maybe it's a, a best bitter or an imperial best bitter at that. 
and they've colored it black. That might be the way to go. That might be the way that they've done it. You've only got to look at Newcastle Brown Ale. For me, Newcastle Brown Ale is a lager that's been colored brown. There's nothing saying whatsoever. The vocation here, they've brewed an imperial light beer and they've coloured it black. I cannot see how they've managed. This is my only kind of consideration. My only thought is how have they brewed a dark beer like this without any of the wonderful, and I'm going to say this, wonderful flavours of roasted malt. It's not roasty, it's not toasty, it's not biscuity, it's not bready. It is overly sweet, almost undrinkable liquid. The younger generation might be all over this. The younger generation might be buying this in spades and Instagrammable and, and sending it out on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And, and, and vocation might be rubbing their hands in joy with the amount of people that are sharing this beer and buying this beer. But I'm not rubbing my hands with any joy whatsoever here. Um, I refuse to have the wool pull over, pulled over my eyes with beer. Um, this is bordering not beer anymore. This is bordering alco pop. It really is bordering alco pop. A 10% alco pop at that. The other thing I'd like to point out, and I'm really sorry if I'm really poking vocation here, but I am going to poke vocation here, is that what vocation have done very cleverly is that they've brewed a base liquid. At this point, I, I'm not even calling it beer. They, they brewed a base liquid at 10% ABV. And then once they brewed it, they've flavoured it with Maltesers. So that's going to be a bit of honeycomb. Then they flavoured another bit of the beer. So they've, what they've done, they've got, they brewed one big batch of beer. Then they've separated it all up into five different parts. And the five parts are Maltesers, Milky Way, Twix, Snickers, Bounty. So the first one they put a bit of honeycomb in, called it a Malteser. The second one they probably put a bit of, I don't know what they would have done, whipped nugget, maybe a bit more sweetness, God help us. Uh, the Twix, they may have put a bit of oatmeal. They might have put a bit of kind of caramel in there. The peanut, it's going to be peanut butter. It's going to be that horrible cloyny kind of peanut butter sweet stout stuff. And of course, this one they've, they've added. And it, there's not even that much coconut in here. I'm not going to say that the, the beer is, is, is like strikingly full of coconut. If you, I'm, 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 I'm almost talking danger here. I'm almost talking danger. If you work in an office and you're sat down in front of a computer screen for maybe seven hours a day and then you jump in your car you go home, you have a bit of food, and then you start drinking these massively sweet beers. Then I'm awfully sorry, but you're going to start packing on the pounds. I can only tell you that because I did the same thing. If you have a look at videos of me from four or five years ago, my face was like a big giant balloon. Now I've learned over time to 
kind of regulate the styles and the types of beer that I drink. I've, I've cut right back on the Imperial Stouts, I've cut right back on the Imperial Porters, barley wines, etc. Because you're drinking a few of them in the night and then you're going to bed and it's laying in your stomach all night. It's a bit, I think this, this, this could be a hazard. If you're an office worker sitting down all day, then you're going home drinking these blooming, massively sweet, full of sugar beers, then you're on to a hide into nothing. If you're a construction worker or if you're a, some kind of, you know, you, you're doing, you're working on your feet all day, then it might be slightly different, slightly different. But I, I'm, I, I as, as I get older, as I get wiser, I fully understand why the, the German Reichsbot is in place. It's to protect people. It's, tr it's to protect people from beers like this, from monstrosities like this. In Germany, under law, German law, Bavarian law, if you're going to call it a beer, there's only four ingredients allowed. Water, malt, hops and yeast. The only four ingredients allowed. Then you're allowed to call it beer. You're not allowed to add a million gallons of sweetener and call it beer. I, 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 at this stage, at this stage, And I'm going to say, because I cross-referenced the previous, I've reviewed a couple of beers today. I started off with a Vocation Best Bitter. I'm going to go just off camera and grab my Vocation Best Bitter. I'm going to finish the review by saying this Devil's Leap Best Bitter is one of the best, best bitters that I've drank all year. And it's from the same brewery. I would much prefer to have this in my hand than to have that absolute monstrosity of a of a beer in my hand. I'm sorry if you don't like the review. I'm sorry if you find my view slightly old fashioned and outdated. But hey ho, they're my views. Hmm. That is delicious. That is delicious beer. Rating for the naughty and nice vocation coconut beer. Um, it really isn't for me. It's going down the sink. It's a 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.